Hello friends, I have my coffee here, stunning views in the back, and a stack of books that I'd like to talk about. It is Christmas Eve today. I am hoping to get through this by the end of this year, sort of the next year. I am here just taking some time off with family and hoping to get through as many books as I possibly can. The first one, I'm actually kind of cheating. I've already been reading this and I have a little bit left. It's called The Door by Magda Zabo. It is a very peculiar and interesting book about a writer who hires a cleaner and kind of their relationship over 20 years. At first, you don't know too much about Emerence, who is the cleaner, and then as you go, both you and the writer who employs her, you find out more about her life. You also find out about the writer's life and how she sees herself through the Emerence's eyes. I really like the writing. So far, it's been great. And I hope this is a five out of five by the end of this vlog. Next up that I'll be reading in this vlog is Virginia Woolf's Night and Day. It is one of her earlier novels because I realized I like her earlier novels far more. It says it is a love story and a social comedy, yet it is also subtly undermines these traditions, questioning a woman's role in the very nature of experience. Its protagonist, Catherine Hilbery, is beautiful and privileged, but uncertain of her future. She must choose between becoming engaged to the oddly prosaic poet William and her dangerous attraction to the lower class Ralph. Fascinating, I'm excited for it. The cover is beautiful, let me show you. And I'm not sure what else you need. Next up, I have Love Stories. This is a collection of love stories I think that the author put together. I mean, it says it on the cover, so I can't expect any less of it. A dear friend from Australia gave this to me, so I'm excited to give this one a try. I also couldn't go without a memoir. This is Stet by Diana Athill. I just recently read one of her novels called Don't Look At Me. That was recommended to me by a bookseller. Absolutely loved it. And this is, she was an editor for half a century. And she actually helped edit authors such as Jean Rhys, B.S. Nepal, Norman Mailer, Philip Roth, and many more. So she really shaped a lot of the literature in the 20th century. This is another one that I'll be reading. Lastly, I have a more contemporary novel, Mrs. March by Virginia Fato, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. This is an interesting premise because the shopkeeper tells one of his clients that he thinks that her husband, who is an author, has written the novel about her and she doesn't realize that. And it's an interesting plot where the author writes about another person's life when mimicking it as fiction. I'm excited to read it. I've heard good reviews. Hopefully I love it as much as other people do. So those are all the books that I'm kind of hoping to read during vacation. I will let you know how they go and take you along for the mountain views in the meantime. I'm here to update you on two out of five books that I have successfully read. They both were a three out of five rating for me, so not what I hoped, but let's dig into it. First one I finished was The Door by Magda Zabo. Now, the writing was simple elegance. It was beautiful from the start. I was gripped to, into the story. I liked the first two thirds of the book. And then by the last end of the book, I kind of lost interest in the relationship between Magda, who's the young Hungarian writer, and Emerence, who's the cleaner that she had hired at the start of the story, just because Emerence comes from a very complicated past and she pushes away Magda a lot from loving her properly. And she kind of sets up a lot of personal boundaries in terms of what she decides to tell the ones that she loves in her life about whatever is going on in her mind. And after a while, I kind of found the relationship between the two of them a little, little frustrating. I lost interest in it, but it is a good exploration of how we love one another and also set up boundaries and who we decide to let into our emotional landscape and not at the end of our lives because a lot of us are closed off. And if anything, this is a lesson of how to be a bit more open with those that you love. <laughs> I'm glad though that I read a Hungarian author as I don't think I have actually ever read anything by a Hungarian author. So that was definitely interesting. The second one that I read, Mrs. March. Also sadly, two thirds of the book were great. Then it kind of waned off. This is a literary psychological thriller about a wife who finds out that her husband, who's her author, has his latest novel that she hasn't read until it was published is actually based off of her, but he had portrayed her as a sex worker. And she kind of starts going mad with how she thinks that her husband sees her, what he's been doing, 
how kind of her mom and her parents saw her when she was growing up. And it's her inner monologue of her losing her mind, which normally I like. And there's a twist at the end that you don't see coming. It's sad to report that I think it was only strong two thirds of the way. And then it kind of went a little down. It wasn't fully what I expected it to be. Overall, I am proud to have now read two out of the five books in the initial reading stack that I created for myself. And hopefully I'll finish all three of them. I'm a bit limited <laughs> in terms of not being able to be my normal mood reader and actually having to finish my books, which I think is a good limitation to have as I'm not in New York City with my lovely little rats. Instead, I'm in the mountains and I'm limited to what I brought here. So let's read on. It is now officially 2023. To be exact, it is January 23rd. And I am wrapping up my reading vlog as the holiday season is over and work commences. Life goes on. So did I read all five of the books? Three and a half. I read three and a half of the books that I had initially wanted to read at the start of this, which for me is pretty good. Now let's talk about the last few ones. I finished up Diana Athill's memoir. I did skim this one a bit just because it's broken up into two parts. The first part is a memoir of her life where she chronicles a little bit of her childhood, then how she became an editor and started working at a publishing press that was kind of prominent in the 20th century, but started off from nothing, which I found quite interesting. And it actually gave a bit of a background into the character in her one and only novel that she wrote in her life. The one that I mentioned a little earlier in this video called Don't Look At Me Like That, which I really liked. And then the second part of the book is a few chapters detailing her work with various authors and also talking about some authors that she helped publish that are kind of forgotten now and that she wants more people to read. I think those chapters are only intriguing to you if you know the author's work well. So for example, I really like Jean Rhys and that is one of the authors that she helped edit and she talked about her relationship with her, who Jean Rhys was as a person, her work. And, there were, and then there were a few other authors such as Brian Moore, who I don't know anything about, but it's also an interesting way to learn about new authors. And then the half, I'm counting love stories. <laughs> half because I started reading this and I read a few stories. And I don't think this is one that I'm going to read in one sitting, but the premise of the book is that Trent Dalton inherited a typewriter that his grandmother had for most of her life and she had sadly passed away at the start of the pandemic. He takes this typewriter to the streets of Melbourne, sits in a corner, and asks random strangers to tell him their love stories and he chronicles and writes about them in this. I think this is a very beautiful premise. I'm a sucker for stories like this. This also kind of reminds me of Conversations on Love. That one was specifically interviews with fellow authors and writers that Natasha Lund did, but this has a very similar premise to it. Since the new year has begun, I wanted to discuss a little bit about my reading goals and intentions mostly for the new year. So this year, I am not setting a cap for how many books I'm hoping to read. Before, I always did one of those like reading goals like read 60, 70, 80, whatever books. And I found it really stressful to hold myself to this number because then I would speed read some books to get it in, sometimes just read short books for the sake of logging it by the end of the year. You know the drill. <laughs> I don't want to do that anymore. I care about quality over quantity. Ah, the wisdom of age. <laughs> so I'm not doing that. But I do have reading intentions for the year. Number one, I hope to read more classics this year. And I am keeping this definition a little bit broad for myself. So this is including books such as A Farewell to Arms by Hemingway, which I've never read. I'm not sure if I will like him and his work, but I want to give it at least a try. I want to read Truman Capote's novel as well. I would like to read George Orwell's Down and Out in Paris and London. That is one that, I, that has been on my radar, but I haven't picked up once yet. I also potentially want to read One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I want to read a collection of stories that I own at home by Edith Wharton. I also would like to try reading a Victorian author that is Elizabeth Gaskell. Uh, North and South is the novel that comes to mind that I wanted to try and read of hers. I really hope that I get through at least half <laughs> of this list and potentially pick up more classics authors. Number two, 
my goal is to try to read more nonfiction. Looking at my list from last year and what I read, most of it was fiction. Actually, basically all of it was fiction, <laughs> which is fine. I think I just needed to distract myself and fiction was the way to go. But I would like to learn a bit more, engage my brain a bit more and kind of formulate new ideas that I think you can sometimes only get by reading nonfiction instead of fiction. And lastly, this reading intention is kind of tied to my writing intention slash thinking intention for the year. This all sounds very meta, but it's not. <laughs> is just to be more dedicated and paying attention to the words that I'm reading of various authors, their writing style, reading more books that will inspire my own writing as well, as I'd really like to dedicate more time to that this year. I think last year my brain was really distracted. I had multiple projects going on and life things happening. And I think it really distracted me from being able to focus on the more creative things, which I think happens to quite a few of us. Honestly, I'm not the only one that this happens to. The, that intention is kind of aligned with me trying to be more attentive to what I'm reading, what I'm writing, less social media strolling, you get the gist. So I hope you enjoyed this little reading vlog. Let me know what your reading intentions are for the new year. And I hope you have a good start to the new year. I'm raising a coffee cup to you and I will see you next week.